Hello everyone, we're back for part two of blind drawing and I am going to do the dogs today but these are the ones that we did last time which came out, which I thought came out quite interesting and I think that we learnt quite a bit we learnt that sometimes we can, we can get we can get fairly accurate when we when we disengage our um, iconic our brains trying to interpret icons instead of drawing what we see, and that some some parts can be quite interpretive, so and expressive, which is surprising. It was surprising to me that um, these could be so interesting. So that's what we did last time. We did the figure, and like I said today, we're going to be doing. The, um, the dogs. So I'll just get my paper ready. I hope you got you've got your paper ready and you're ready to start. If you um, did down if you did download the reference, you can just follow along with that. If not, go and grab four of your own references. Um, I did I did notice that I didn't really need the timer. So what I'm going to do instead is I am just going to time each one to make sure that I don't go over five minutes for each one. I don't think I will, but it's for me, it's um, I like to have it there as, you know, my safety blanket. So we will start with the first one, with the first dog. Now remember not to look at the paper under any circumstance, no paper looking. So I think for this one I'm going to start at the top. And we're going to use the whole sheet, so don't be afraid to use, take up some space. You can go across the forms where you see a way across. We have to slow down our eyes following what we see. Well, obviously, but I mean, my my hand is trying to follow what I see. It's like I'm pretending to trace the contours of the dog. Sometimes I'll forget where I am so I will double up. And that's fine. Going over the shoulder and down the leg. Do the other shoulder, the other leg. It's a little bit cut off at the bottom, the picture, but that's fine. Well, it's not preferable, but it's fine. No, 
I'm going to do the back legs. I think I'm done. Wow. I, I'm sorry, I, it got a little bit cut off there. I'm not sure I probably didn't get that on camera. So I do apologize for that. But yeah, that's an interesting looking dog. So I'll just put today's date on here. Always date your work. It's very expressive. The chain is surprising to me. And um, yeah, I mean it's unmistakably a dog, but it's more it's more than just a picture a a copy of a picture of a dog. It's got it's got its own life in there, which is great. Love it. All right. <clears throat> Let's get on to the next one. Let me put this over to the side. Oh, that was the first one. Down. Actually, I'll write down what it is as well, because I did notice in the previous years. I mean, it's quite obvious what it is, but it is nice to have that written down. It's kind of like a, a journey of your own, your own journey, your own journal journey, journey, <laughs> journal, <laughs> both, both. Alright, so we go for the next dog, and I chose this one because of its profile, uh, silhouette, I mean. It, I thought it had a good silhouette. So um, we might switch the paper around. I'll try to keep this on camera this time. Just take my cursor off. Right, so I'm going to start with the ears. Remember, not looking, not looking down at the paper. Oh, I'll just... This one here looks like a cattle dog cross. We're slowing down, try to include as much detail as we can see. And as much detail as we want. But because this dog is far away, can't really focus on the little stuff so I don't think this, this one will take as long. I'll include the chain. I'm just making marks for the chain. I don't know how those marks will go. The chest. We'll do the far front leg. And the thing is I can still sometimes feel myself my brain kicking back in and trying to tell me what to draw. So we're trying, we are trying our best to bypass that. I'm just going to actually do the whole shoulder. Go back down because I don't think I did that part of the leg. Go back up, do the neck. And we are trying to teach ourselves to bypass that and draw what exactly what we see. And not the let and not let the brain kick in because the brain isn't accurate it's going to tell us all sorts of things to shortcut to get it to, to get out of doing the work So if you find yourself drawing on automatic pilot, try and, try and stop yourself from that. So I'm just going over that back leg. And I'm going to put an indication of this rock that the dog is standing on. 
And I think we're done. That was a quick one. Only two minutes. Wow. I'm just letting it I'm just letting it sink in because that's and this is the great part about doing these blind drawings is you can after after you do them you can sit there and just really sort of take it in and just try to to see what it is that you've done I just find them they're just so fascinating the towel is interesting and the face That was the second one. Yeah, the face is quite interesting. It's all smushed together, but oh, yeah, I like it. I could just look at them for for ages and just really just because when you're looking at them after you do them. You're also, it's like a second, it's like a second journey. The first one you took, you experienced in the moment. You, you, you were there. And the second time when you're actually looking at it afterwards, you're taking another journey over the first one. But now you're getting to see where you went instead of just being in the moment. I don't know if that makes sense. But that's why afterwards, you know, it's just so fascinating to look at. So let's go for our third dog. Try and take a little bit more time because that last one was quick. <clears throat> I knew it would be quick because it was basically just a silhouette. And this one is, well, I mean, it has a good silhouette. That is one of the things that I wanted to try and find for these blind drawing exercises. But um, let's get started and see how long this one takes. Once again, I'm going to start at the, at the, at the top. I think I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I'm trying, going, trying to figure out a way, a journey over the head. It's just funny because sometimes I can feel myself I'm looking at the picture, I'm not looking at the paper, but I can feel myself wanting to skip ahead. And what we want to try and do is get the your hand to keep in time with your eye. And basically, the hand isn't, I mean, both need to slow down, but I find my eye will try and speed up. Now, I can't remember if I did that side of the head over there, so I'm just going to go over it again. And I think that's where the interest comes in when you when you end up going over certain parts a number of times. I want to get over to this outside edge, so I'm just going to go up. Now, I'm not trying not to lift my pen off the paper too much. You can if you find yourself out in the middle of nowhere. But see if you can find your way through the, the reference, the picture, without doing that. It only takes some time. And the other front paw. And 
down the back. Take it slowly over the hips. I'm going to do this leg. Oops, felt myself skipping ahead there. Let's just put a little bit of fur in there. And the other leg is behind here. We'll just draw through. And some fur down here. And an indication for the tail, because the tail's not really showing. Yeah, I think we're done. Okay, so it was about four minutes. Uh, that was our third one. I hope you keep yours. I hope you keep yours because, you know, you can come back to them and have a look at them and you you might be surprised that you actually quite like them once, once you give them a bit of time. But, okay, that's... That's fascinating. So it, it gives us that abstract element. I like I like how the ears, I actually really like the shape of the head and how and how this line here that connects all the way down. I like that. I like that line. I think it really makes I think it really makes a statement. It doesn't matter that this isn't connected. These long lines and then the small small patches of, of details. And these these pores obviously aren't well drawn, but in an abstract way, they work. This one probably not so much, but these two these two really work. It's not, it's unmistakably a dog. You can tell it's a dog. It's That's great. I hope yours turn out um, in a way that surprises you as well. All right, so we're going for the next one, the last one. I could do these every day. <laughs> these are just so fascinating. They're just so fascinating. I feel like, I don't know. Am I weird to find them more interest to find this more interesting than a perfectly rendered well-drawn dog? I don't know. I, I might be the only one. <laughs> Tell me if you find if you find these types of drawings interesting as well. <clears throat> oh, I just need a quick drink. Okay. All right, so this last one I chose because, again, it had a really good silhouette, and we've actually got more a few more areas that we can focus on like that um, like that first one that first one had quite a few areas that we could focus on even though it was just a dog sitting it had the chain it had the open mouth the folded ears it was um, and so this one is its stance is very very interesting and I thought this would make a great blind drawing get really abstract so let's just go ahead and start. Whoops. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So again, I'm going to start with the head. I'm going to start with the ears. Actually, would like to to really focus on the head shape so I'm just trying to slow down because I know that the slower you go <coughs> with certain parts the more the more I'm just going over that ear again the more detail you can get in you perceive detail you know it's all abstract but down the muzzle the nose. I really want to get that nose in. Okay. 
And I've got a problem here because I didn't put the eyes in and I'm nowhere near where the eyes are. So I'm just going to try and do the jaw, 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 and work my way down where I think the eyes, the eye, because it's just one eye, should go. And then we're back down underneath. Now you can take your journey around this, around this picture, around this photo, any which way you like. In fact, I suggest you find your own way around the image. Now I really want to actually, I want to get under that chin and go all the way down. So I really like that long line of the last one. Now there's grass here, so I'm just going to pretend I know, which really isn't the point of line drawing, but I want to get the shoulder in. I'll go back and do. Actually, I'll go, I'll do that now. See if we can get, I actually want to do that ear again. Now I've done that ear a couple of times. Don't particularly want to go down that line again, so I'm just going to try and go down the inside. And hopefully I'm back at that shoulder. Put the elbow in. Alright, so now we can go underneath the dog, put his man bits in, just put a little bit of detail here for the, the what do you call it, the, down the leg, oh, that'd be a nice big long line. Again, the paw is hidden, so I'm just, I might actually just scribble for some grass, rather than pretend I know what I'm what the paw looks like because I don't. Back up. I think I've gone up a little bit too high so I'm just going to bring it down and then start the tail. I can feel myself close to the edge so it's unfortunate. would have liked to have actually I would have liked to have gotten a huge piece of paper. I just stood up and, and, and do this. <laughs> I think that would be awesome. All right, I think I think we're done. Oh wait, I didn't do the other back leg. Let's go back down. Actually, no, let's just guess. I took my pen off the paper and I'm guessing where this back leg goes. Oops, wrong angle. I think. Again, I can't see. I'm not looking at my paper. And that'll be obvious to anyone who's watching that I'm not looking. All right. I think that's all the bits. Let's see. Oh, wow. All right, the whole thing's gone over this way. That one actually took close to five minutes. So one, 24, blind, drawing. And that was our fourth one. <coughs> okay, let's have a look. Let's take this off there quick. Yeah, okay, that's that's interesting. We've got that long line that I tried to put in. But it doesn't stand out as much as, because I went over this ear quite a few times. And I really slowed down with the head, so I think the head really, I think the head really makes this drawing. It's just so fascinating. I think what it is, is because it's not complete. It's because it's so abstr abstract, it makes, the brain work to fill in the gaps and I think my brain enjoys that. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I think it's giving my brain something to do that's interesting and what's interesting is is 
looking at this and, and you know, just discovering the image that I just drew because I didn't know what I'd just drawn. I'm, I'm discovering it now. I think if this wasn't up here, I would. I did. It did feel like I went up too high. If that wasn't there, I think that would make, would have made a really great picture. I would love to do this again, but just blow it up. That'll be something that I would actually hang on my wall. In fact, I might hang this one up on my wall because I love it. I love it. That's great. It's just so visually interesting so let's let's go over let's have a look at what we did today so that was the fourth one that was the third one I just love this one I like the details of the head on this one too and I do like some of those long lines which I was able to consciously incorporate into this one in a way where it influences the journey that I take over the over the photo over the reference rather than the actual drawing itself if that makes sense that was our second one our cattle dog on a rock that's all right it's not as interesting as some of the others but it's unmistakably a dog as all of these are and that was our first one I think the abstractness of this one gives it gives it a real a real personality. It looks like it's looking straight at you. It just and that's what it is. These drawings have personality. They're originals. I mean, obviously copied from a reference, but they're um, the actual drawing. The actual marks are original marks. You can't. You wouldn't be able to draw this again unless you painstakingly try to copy which would defeat the purpose and this is what this is what I'm getting at with these blind drawings is that you're creating something different from the reference something original it's like a thumbprint no two blind drawings would ever be the same never it's just physically impossible for for them to be the same I really like these two I like the first one of these three these three would be my favorites How good would that make as a series? Like I could see see that as a, a series of three paintings done like this on someone's wall. Yeah, I hope I hope yours turned out just as interesting as as these did. Again, I would love to see them um, and see what see what you, you you've come up with. Just gotta these were our other ones. Keep them, definitely keep them because you're just going to um, I don't know, they're there to enjoy. <laughs> I like these better than the normal drawings. I just I just do. To me they're exciting. But anyway, I hope you joined in on that. I don't know how long this video is going for. Hopefully not for too long. I think I also discovered some things about doing blind drawings as well. How taking, going slower allows you to put a little bit more detail in there. And how, um, you know, doing double lines can make it interesting. And how some parts can, can be accurate, surprisingly. I mean, more so with the figures with me, with those hands from last week. And just, just how, you know, I keep saying it, but they're just so interesting. So next week I will do another video. There was, how many was there? Oops, let me get my mouse working again. So we've done one part one and the dogs were part two. I'm just going to move my references around on the sheet. Put the ones that we've done to the side. So we've got, what we've got left, we've got heads, human heads, 
We've got cats and we've got the horses. The horses will be really interesting. I'd love to see the lines, the abstract lines for the horses. I mean, I really love the dogs, but I love all of them. <laughs> I hope you love all of them too. I keep going on about it, but I really hope you enjoyed this and I will see you for the next one. Try it out for yourself and see how abstract your drawings get, how surprising they can be. And if you really like them, if you find them really int visually interesting like I do, just put them up on your wall. You can do that. You're, you are allowed to hang up your own drawing. I actually made a video on that as well because there are many benefits to doing that. But I'll see you next time for the next part and keep drawing everyone.